Hi! Over the years, I managed to collect quite a few of these power bricks from old laptop computers. And here on the bench, I have three of these identical Lighton 12 volts 2.5 amps ones. And my goal is to use multiple of these as the input to a linear regulator with an adjustable output up to around 35 volts. Now, the reason I wanted to use a linear regulator as the output stage is mainly for the superior power supply ripple rejection, or PSRR, compared to a switching power supply. This would significantly reduce the switching noise at the output. And the linear regulator I have in mind is an LM338, which can output 5 amps, but can only dissipate 25 watts continuously. So this poses two challenges given the criteria I have. The first issue is that the power brakes I have here are only rated for 2.5 amps, so clearly we need to at least parallel two of them to achieve the 5 amps output. The second issue is that if I put in 36 volts and my output say stays at 5 volts, then I would only be able to deliver under 1 amp continuous current since the linear regulator would be power limited. To address this second issue, what I needed to do is to switch the input voltage depending on the output voltage. Now, this technique is commonly used in many linear power supplies, especially the ones with a very wide output range, like the Topword 6603A I have. So let's take a look at the circuit design to see how we can achieve this using two relays. So you can see here we have three 12 volts inputs that represents the three power bricks we have. And the relays here are currently in de-energized state, and you can see that the output is essentially just the first 12 volts here. So imagine that we set the trip point of the first comparator to say 10 volts, and the output voltage rises above 10 volts. This first switch is gonna be switching to the S1 state. And uh, essentially, uh, the, the second relay is going to stay at the, the O1 state. So essentially, we're going to be outputting a 12 volts plus the second 12 volts, 24 volts. Now, as the output voltage keeps rising, when it trips the second comparator threshold, let's say the second one is set at 24 volts or 22 volts, it doesn't really matter. And once that is flipped, we can clearly see that the second relay essentially get taken out of the picture, but uh, the third relay going to be coming into play here. So this switch essentially P1 and S1 get connected and will be outputting a 36 volts. But how about the first issue? How do we get more than 2.5 amps from the output? Well, the simplest way is to parallel the output up. This means we will need six of these power bricks instead of the three we have here. It seems a little bit of uh, excessive. In reality though, the only times I really needed the current in excess of two amps is mostly under 10 volts. So in my case, I really just needed to double up the first stage. But can we achieve this with only three power bricks we have here? Well, the answer is of course, yes. All we need to do is to modify the relay circuitry I showed you earlier, as you can see here. So this circuit looks a little bit more complex than the one I had shown you before, but let's uh, walk through here. And uh, the difference here is that the first relay, instead of a single pole double throw relay, we are using a double pole double throw relay. And the purpose of which is to switch the first two of these power supplies in the, either in series or in parallel. So let's take a look here. So right now, again, at its uh, default state, which uh, the output is, say, between 0 volts and 10 volts, and the first comparator output is low. So both of these relays are de-energized. And you can see here, we essentially, the uh, lower rail of the uh, second power supply is connected to the negative of the first power supply and uh, the uh, 12 volts is connected through this uh, uh, second pole here to the second power supply's 12 volts rail. So essentially, these two power supplies are parallel together. And the, the output is through this uh, third relay switch. So you can see here, we have now two doubled up uh, 12 volts. 
Now let's say the output voltage now exceeds 10 volts and the first comparator tripped. So the switch essentially flips up to the S1 and S2 state. And uh, here, let's see what happens. When P1, this uh, first pole, switches to S1, obviously the positive of the first power rail is connected to the negative of the second power rail. And this switch here doesn't really matter when it switches to S2 because it essentially gets disconnected. So now, because the second switch is still staying on its original state, we can see that essentially the first power supply and the second power supply now get connected in series. And once the output voltage goes up further, at a certain point we'll trip the second comparator, let's say around 20 volts or 21 volts. And at that point, the second relay will be switching to the S1 state. So you can see that the output would be connected through the upper rail of the third power supply. Essentially, we're going to be outputting 36 volts. And now you can see that through some clever use of the relays, we can achieve what we wanted to do, basically to parallel the 12 volts when we were in the lower range and to connect them in series and also add in the third power supply as the output voltage increases. And so that was the general approach I'm going to take. Okay, so now we have some rough ideas on how to connect these three power bricks together. So let's check out these uh, light on power bricks first. And the first thing I wanted to check is to see whether the output negative terminal is earth grounded. And if that is the case, then we would need to do some modifications before we can put them in series. Now, most of these three prong power supplies are earth ground referenced, but not always, but let's just take a quick check. So for that, I'm going to check earth pin and uh, connect to zero volt rail. And as you can see that they are indeed connected. So we cannot just uh, hook up these power supplies in series as is, as otherwise it will short out the output. And uh, let me open one of these up to see what is inside. It's always a good idea to at least check what the construction looks like and whether or not it's safe before you proceed into modifications. And now I have taken this out of its uh, case. And uh, from the top, it's uh, relatively compact. But uh, if I flip it over, I can see that there is a ground plane PCB soldered onto the bottom. And uh, so I can't really see what is inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these and we'll come back and uh, take a closer look. Okay, I just desoldered this uh, ground plane and uh, let's remove it and take a look. Yeah, indeed, there's nothing underneath. So this is just a, a copper plane here. And uh, from underneath here, you can see that this is really well designed board. And uh, all these high voltage areas, you can see the cutouts and uh, between uh, each pin of your bridge rectifier and also your high voltage capacitors here. And just by looking at the board layout, you can clearly see that this is using a flyback transformer. So basically the ins input and output are fully isolated via this uh, opto isolator here. Now this uh, two chips design is fairly standard, but unfortunately I cannot find any information on this chip or this chip. This one is an ST part and this one is an on semiconductor part, but the part numbers do not match any of the ones I can find online. So let's flip it over and uh, take a closer look here. Again, you can see that everything is of a very high quality here. This is a Nippon Chemicon cap, not one of those one Han Lo brand. And uh, if you look carefully, you can see there's some ferrite beads on, for example, on this lead of this uh, class Y capacitor here, bridging the input and output windings to reduce the EMI of the switching power supply. And also you can see, uh, not sure if you can see here, but uh, this, uh, me, yeah, this angle you can see here. So you can see that there's also a, a ferrite bead on that uh, diode there to reduce switching noise. And this kind of construction is what you expected 
for this kind of uh, very high quality power bricks, but you usually are not going to find these in one of those uh, no name brand uh, power supplies. And because of the flyback topology used here, it offers very good input and output isolation. And uh, since it's fundamentally isolated, we can then remove the earth reference and uh, the output from this uh, power supply would be floated. Now, obviously, by removing the earth reference to the output, we also removed one safety protection mechanism. In the rare event, say that uh, the input and output from the flyback transformer gets shorted somehow, then you would run into a situation where the output becomes live, which could be very dangerous. But for a well-designed power supply like this one appears to be, it is uh, extremely unlikely for this kind of uh, malfunction to occur. Now, keep in mind that uh, there are a lot of uh, power bricks out there are not grounded to begin with, so you would have similar risk to deal with there as well. Of course, you could always, you should always use a GFCI outlet, so that would greatly reduce the risk. And another thing I wanted to mention is, uh, in order for you to safely put these power bricks in series, you should really add a reverse protection diode at the output. Now, I don't see one here, so we should definitely add that. This is for to protect the power supply in the event that uh, the output gets shorted, so you don't reversely bias the output of this uh, power supply here. Now, before I remove the ground reference and also add the reverse protection diode, let's do some quick tests to get a baseline to see how this power supply behaves. Let's enable the electronic load. And we ramp up the current. So let's uh, do 2.5 amp. That's uh, what it's rated for. And no problem at all. Now there's a little bit of a voltage drop through the wires, but uh, that's a uh, minimal here. So I'm not going to bother measuring the output here. And it looks like we can still uh, increase it a little bit. So let's keep increasing. And uh, no problem. So this appears to have a lot of headroom and now we're at uh, 3.3 amps and there's still no problem so which is to be expected all these uh, power bricks usually are built uh, with a very wide margin uh, in terms of spec so that uh, they can be abused quite a bit now we're at uh, 3.5 amps and no problem at all so looks like we can still increase a little bit and uh, nope so here we started to uh, drop out and you can see that uh, it started oscillating here. So looks like we can reasonably assume that we can output uh, maybe 3.5 amps from each of these power supplies. Very good. And once we have done the modifications I mentioned earlier by removing the earth reference and also by adding a reverse protection diode on each of the output, we can hook them up and uh, do some preliminary testing here. By the way, another thing we should pay attention to is how much we can safely float the zero volt rail on the power supply's output. This value is limited by the power supply's output isolation. Since we're only going to connect three of these power supplies together, it doesn't really matter too much as the maximum voltage you see on the floating ground is around 24 volts. But this is definitely an important point you should keep in mind, especially if you're dealing with higher voltages. As you can see here, I already hooked up all three of these power bricks in series here, and you can read the output voltage now is 36.8 volts, so there's no issue of uh, hooking them up in series. Now you do notice that I have these uh, series resistors here, and these are actually not required for hooking them in series in this configuration, but these are used later on when we're paralleling the outputs together for current sharing. And the resistance value here, they are 50 milliohms each. So let me turn on the electronic load and quickly verify whether or not we can still draw 3.5 amps as we saw earlier that we could on an individual power brick here. So now let's uh, start uh, ramping up the current. And we're going to stop at uh, 3.5 because we know that once we um, in fact, we can go up a little bit, but you know, for safety margins, we will say that maximum we can draw is 3.5.
and now the output voltage dropped a little bit but uh, uh, that's mainly because of the wiring and also these three resistors here now these are 50 milliohm so the voltage drop will not be that significant anyway so clearly we have no problem and uh, operating in series here for the second test i put in two of these power bricks in parallel and as you can see here the output is uh, hooked up to the electronic load via these current uh, sharing resistors so in theory we should be able to uh, output 7 amps without problem so let's give it a test here so i'm going to ramp up the current and this is where a single power brick's output, maximum output is. So I keep uh, increasing and you can see no problem. So now we're at uh, five amps. So let's uh, get to seven amps. Yep, so no problem. So very good. So now we have uh, at least uh, uh, in theory, tried both the parallel and the series uh, operations here. What I want to point out is that the use of current sharing resistors here are absolutely critical. And uh, to prove the point, we can try without these uh, current sharing resistors. But first I want to show you that these two power supplies are absolutely identical. As you can see, I'm doing some voltage measurement here. So for one power supply, the output is 12.34 volts, the other uh, power supply is also identical 12.34 volts so you would have thought okay we may be able to just hook them up uh, directly together well as you will see here if i do that uh, let's see what the outcome is so let's uh, hook these up without the current uh, sharing resistor here and uh, so let's start increasing the output uh, current here again right now we're approaching the limit of the first of one single power brick, which is 3.5 amps. Okay, so now let's uh, start increasing. And you will see once we hit the four amps, which is actually the you know really upper limit of a single power brick, and you will see that output started to drop out. And the reason is that these power supplies have a very, very tight regulation and the output barely changes throughout the current range so it is impossible for them to uh, correctly balance themselves out without this current sharing resistor i think i'm going to wrap up this video here in the next video hopefully we will finish building the power supply with these three power bricks as the input and we will build the relay switching mechanism I showed you earlier to control the maximum input voltage to our linear regulator. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you liked the video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I will catch up with you next time.